Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the movie part of our series, What If Broken Deku Fell for Mina. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is 12 Angry Men from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Mina Ashido moved at a hurried pace as she stepped off the train, grimacing a bit as she looked at the clock on her phone. She didn't even bother to say excuse me as she weaved her way somewhat forcefully through the crowd of people around her as she made for the exit to the station. No time to be polite, she already super late. Thankfully the street outside was far less congested than the station, and the young heroine was able to move at a faster pace, though not nearly as fast as she could be going. Ugh, why did I have to go with heels? Stupid. She grumbled as her shoes clicked rhythmically on the pavement. Part of her wanted to simply take them off and run to her destination, but she didn't want to work up a sweat. Skating there with her quirk was also extremely tempting, but that was probably an even worse idea for several reasons. She checked her phone again, trying to will time itself to slow down for her. 6.39, almost 45 minutes late. The acid wielder was on her way to a reunion with her classmates at UA. It had been one year since they had all graduated, and they decided to celebrate the occasion with a little party of sorts. Mina herself had been the one to suggest it, as a matter of fact. One year may have seemed too early to some for a high school reunion, but that was just a testament to how close their group had been. Even after being split among different classes after their first year, the former members of Class 1A had all stayed friends up until graduation and beyond. Sure, maybe some of them didn't regularly hang out with each other, but they all still had a bond they all shared. Much of that was due to all the perils they had faced together both in and out of the classroom, but it was also just the fact that most of them got along. Unfortunately, adulthood had meant a lot of Mina's old class hadn't been in contact with each other. Everyone had gone off to continue their hero career, whether that meant going to college, sidekicking, or even trying to strike out on their own. With how much the hero world had changed since that fateful day when All Might stepped down, everyone had been quite busy. Mina herself had currently sidekicking with the pro Maruko, who was very good at making sure she had plenty to do. It was demanding work, but Alien Queen didn't expect anything less. While some members of 1A that had been particularly close stayed in pretty regular contact, on the whole they had not been able to keep in touch as often as they'd like. So Mina had reached out to a few of the more organized members of their group and proposed this little reunion idea. Everyone was on board, and it didn't take long to nail down a place and time. And here Mina was, late to the event she herself had planned. And she had nobody to blame but herself, she had been so determined to find the perfect look for the occasion that she had spent far too much time getting ready. Then there was a delay with her train due to a villain attack earlier that day, which only made things worse. Still, all that time in front of her wardrobe had paid off, Mina was quite proud of her current look. She'd picked out a short, fuzzy sky blue dress with long sleeves that stopped just above her hips with a white belt around her midriff with a gold buckle. Just under it was a pair of tight black shorts that connected to some equally black leggings, with skin showing between them at her upper thighs. On her feet were high-heeled boots that were tan in color. To finish it off she had picked out a pair of loose-fitting gold necklaces that went down to her chest, a couple gold bracelets on her right wrist, and a pair of triangle-shaped gold earrings. It was both fancy and cute without looking excessive, and Mina felt it matched her unique skin tone perfectly. Definitely time well spent, even if it did make her late. Sure her old classmates wouldn't really mind if she showed up in, say, gym clothes, but she wanted to look nice for this for a couple of reasons. One was simply the fact that she loved being fashionable and getting dressed up for stuff. The other, well, it wasn't like Mina was intending to leave with someone tonight, but she decided it couldn't hurt to consider that being a possibility. She'd be lying if she said she wasn't feeling just a little bit flirty. Why not turn some heads? She sighed. It wasn't like she only planned this for nefarious purposes, she genuinely just wanted to see her old friends again, and that was still her priority here. But stuff had happened between when they had planned this and now, and she was feeling a bit. Wanting, for lack of a better word. It was only a fleeting feeling, but it was there. It wasn't long before the tardy girl finally arrived at her destination. The Ayarazu household was just as impressive as she remembered. Momo may not have lived here anymore, but her parents had been more than okay with letting her use it to host this little get-together. The class mom, as she had sort of become known as, had handled the majority of the planning for this alongside Mina. Following the adorable signs Momo had made to guide people, Mina made it to the front door. Ringing the doorbell, she smiled as the door soon opened to reveal her fellow party planner. Momo, she exclaimed as she rushed forward to embrace the taller woman, who returned the gesture in kind. Gosh, I am so oh sorry I'm late. I just, totally lost track of time. It's alright, most of us figured you were just taking a while to get ready or something, Momo said as they released each other. This prompted a small blush from her friend. Man, I really built up a rep, huh? They both laughed at this. Also, wow you look nice. Momo was still the same tall, shapely girl she had always been, though she looked a bit thicker than she did back in high school. 
Mina was used to this, knowing full well that her extra weight was the result of a very specialized diet and training regimen designed to help her utilize her quirk to its fullest potential. There was plenty of muscle underneath that baby fat. She wore a sparkling red dress that flowed elegantly with some jewelry to match it, as well as black heels. Thanks, so do you. Momo responded, returning the compliment. That blue suits you, right? Mina did a little pose, beaming with pride. Already her hard work was paying off. You guys better not have had too much fun without me. Momo chuckled. Of course not. Now come on, I'm sure you're eager to see everyone. The pair moved for the living room, which is where the party proper was occurring. Along the way the two girls chatted about what they had been up to recently. Momo was one of the people Mina had stayed in contact with the most after UA, so neither of them was pressed to spend a ton of time alone together. Plenty of other people they needed to catch up with. Mina's smile only grew bigger as she entered the living room. Just about everyone else from her old class was there, all broken up into little groups throughout the room as they talked. Most were holding glasses, bottles, or little plates of food that had clearly come from a nearby table full of all sorts of snacks and drinks. Some faint music was playing on a stereo system throughout the whole room. Hey everyone, Momo winced as Mina shouted, unable to contain her excitement as she took in all the familiar faces. The whole room turned to see their most colorful classmate waving energetically as her legs bounced up and down a bit. A chorus of people cheerfully shouting Mina, and Ashido echoed back. Mina wasted no time. Within less than a minute she had a full glass of wine in one hand, a plate of fruit, crackers, and fancy cheeses in the other, and was darting around the room to personally greet everyone. Hugs were tricky when your hands were full, but she found a way to make it work. Nobody was safe from her affection. She took the time to personally catch up with each and every person in the room. A handful of her old classmates seemed to be missing, but talking to the others revealed that they were all here, just not in the room at the moment. Mina loved seeing how everyone had changed since high school. Kayoka had gone even further with her punk look and had even joined a band at the college she was at. Tenya was still very much a straight edge but had become much more relaxed and casual than he once was, and naturally was also attending college. Asui seemed to have become even more frog-like than she was before but was otherwise the same girl. Everyone had grown up just a little bit, but deep down they were all still the same people Mina knew and loved. She didn't stay with one group for too long, though she promised everyone she'd talk with them more later. There was so much she wanted to talk to them all about, but she also wanted to make sure she didn't leave anyone out. Eventually, though, someone did make her slow down. As she was moving from one group conversation to another, a very familiar face caught her eye. She nearly dropped her wine glass as she gasped, her eyes lighting up like stars. Oh, CHA. She squealed, causing a few nearby people to jump in surprise. Achako Yuraka immediately turned to see her and had a similar reaction as their eyes met. Mina. The pair practically ran towards each other before meeting with a vice-like hug. Mina lifted her best friend in the whole world up a bit and spun her around a bit as they both laughed, all while keeping her food and drink steady. Achako was the person Mina had been looking forward to seeing here the most. The two had been besties throughout all their years at UA and frankly still were. However, life had kept them apart ever since graduation. Sure, they had talked through texts and video calls, but it just wasn't the same as hanging out in person. I was in the bathroom, did you just get here? Achako asked as Mina set her down. Yep, took a little too long picking what to wear. The pinquette said as if she was proud of that fact. What do you think? She did a little twirl to give her friend a full display. Ooh, that's so pretty. That a new dress? Achako asked. Sure is. Mina looked the brunette over. But seriously, can we talk about your outfit? Like, damn girl. Achako was wearing a shoulderless dress that was light pink in color. It was snug above the waist, but below it was loose and wavy like a skirt, ending just above her knees. Around the waist was a wide sash tied in a bow that was a darker pink compared to the rest of the dress. Combined with her curly, shoulder-length hair, she had a bit of a princess look to her. Like it, it was on sale. Mina laughed. Of course it was. Even if Achako was making decent money with her current sidekicking job with 13, she was still quite the penny pincher. It went on like this for several minutes. There wasn't too much they needed to catch up on, as they talked to each other very frequently. They were simply happy to be with each other in person after so long. As they were both refilling on snacks, a mop of green hair across the room caught Mina's eye. So how's your better half doing these days? Izuku Midoriya hadn't been in the room when Mina arrived. She was actually a little surprised he wasn't with Achako when Mina spotted her, and she was even more surprised that he was all the way across the room talking to some other people. When Achako didn't answer, she turned back to face her with a mischievous grin. What? You two still too shy to ha? Her smile dropped as she saw Achako's expression. Rather than embarrassed and flustered like Mina expected, her face looked a bit sullen as she stared down at the table. Acha, the brunette still didn't say anything, instead looking back up at Mina with that same expression. Black eyes widened in shock. No, Mina put a hand to her mouth as she felt her chest tighten. He please don't tell me you too. We did, Achako interrupted with a small sigh. We broke up. Mina whirled around as she folded her hands together and put them in front of her mouth. She shut her eyes and inhaled sharply, then turned around and opened them again. Lowering her hands, she stared at Achako with a very calm expression for a moment. 
Then, she suddenly grasped her friend by the shoulders as her attempt to not freak out failed miserably. You broke up, she shrieked, practically shaking Achako. Be but, why you were so, with him, and you too were. What, Mina's brain was doing loop-de-loops trying to figure out how what felt like the most perfect pair could have split up. Hey Mina, listen, did he dump you? Her dark eyes narrowed. He didn't cheat on you, did he? I swear, I'm going to go over there and... Mina, Achako cut her off with a surprising amount of authority as she gripped her emotional friend's shoulders. Please, calm down. It's not like that. The pink girl stared at her for a moment, hung her head a bit and took another deep breath as she relaxed her hold on Achako. Okay, okay, then come, and come, I'm so not calm. Her head snapped back up as her grip tightened again. How long? Why didn't you tell me? This couldn't have just happened, I. Realizing she was getting worked up again and that people were probably starting to stare, she stopped herself and let go of her friend. You good? Achako asked wearily. Mina took a few more deep breaths, forcing herself to relax a little. For real this time. She nodded. I'm super sorry, I just... God, really? Yes, really. Achako looked to the side and rubbed the side of her head. I actually didn't tell you because I didn't want you freaking out like this. I... Okay, fair I guess. But still, Mina was a little hurt. Also, it's... It's actually been less than a week. Oh, well, that makes a lot more sense then. The pink girl blinked a few times. But seriously, Acha, if he did anything... Relax, he didn't. Come on, you know Izuku. Mina went slightly hearing her call him that instead of Deku. Granted, Deku was his hero name now, so it was maybe more casual to say Izuku. Well, I mean, he kept one hell of a secret from all of us for a while there, Mina pointed out. Achako let out a small laugh. Okay yes, but that's a bit different. He would have told us about one for all sooner if he could have. Mina still remembered the day the truth about Izuku's bizarre quirk came to light. It was quite the revelation, and it had taken a long time for her to wrap her head around the idea of quirks being passed on. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, what happened then? Mina felt she was close enough to Achako to ask this kind of stuff. Well, I actually was sort of the one to break up with him. Mina went bug-eyed at this. Why? She had to stop herself from having another freakout. You're kidding. Achako had had a crush on Izuku for years before finally working up the courage to ask him out. And that was after more than a little help from Mina. It wasn't until just around graduation that they finally became an item. How could this have happened? I, I just... Mina shook her head. Well, what do you mean sort of? Achako took a sip of her drink. Well, it was kind of mutual, I guess. I mean, I was the one who decided we should stop seeing each other, but after talking it over a bit he agreed it was for the best. I see. Well, that made it somewhat better at least. Still, Mina could feel her heart sinking into her stomach. She had been so happy for her two friends when they finally got together. It was a project she had been working on for over a year, and to see that it didn't end up working out was disheartening, to say the least. If it makes you feel better, we're still friends. Though we're giving each other some space before we really start talking again. This news cheered Mina up a bit. Well, it's something at least. She sighed. So what went wrong? Well, it's... complicated. Of course it was. I guess after the first few months, the whole I'm really dating him. Thing kinda wore off and just... I don't know. Achako's eyebrow furrowed as she seemed to be thinking. I guess I started realizing Izuku was, well, a real person and not. She trailed off. Not the perfect guy you made up in your head. Nina finished, this starting to sound way too familiar. Yeah, that. He's still a wonderful person, but just. Achako sighed again. I know what that's like, her friend said quietly. Or well, I know what it's like to be on the other side of that. The pink girl looked back to where she saw Izuku. He was talking to a few people, though Mina was focused on one in particular. Ajiro Kirishima, her oldest friend here. And her ex. Huh. Achako followed her eyes. Oh, right. Ajiro had confessed to Mina partway through their last year at UA. Mina had expected he had feelings for her for some time, but was waiting for him to work up the courage to ask her out himself. She had accepted, of course, she had begun developing feelings for him once she suspected he liked her. Mina didn't regret dating him or anything. In fact, the two of them were still very good friends. But at some point after they had graduated, their relationship begun to get shaky. It was sort of both their faults. Ijiro, much like Achako with Izuku, had put Mina on a bit of a pedestal for years. She had been something of a role model to him ever since middle school. And again, like Achako, he realized she was in fact a real person. Which meant she had some flaws. Flaws such as perhaps being a little too clingy. Or thinking what? Well, hey too soon about things like marriage and kids. Or even little things like, say, snoring. It didn't help that he could sometimes be a bit too bullheaded about things. Long story short, they both realized at some point that if they didn't stop dating, they might start hating each other. This was a little over two months ago, and Mina had been single ever since. It wasn't just that, though, Achako continued, causing Mina to stop reminiscing and look back at her. To be honest, I'm sure Izuku ever really liked me like that. What? Mina scoffed at this notion. Come on, why would he have dated you if he didn't? Well, you know how much he hates upsetting people. I think he mostly said yes to make me happy. She shrugged. Just, I could start to tell, you know. As much as Mina didn't want to admit it, agreeing to a date just to make someone happy was definitely something Izuku would do. 
The guy had never dated anyone before anyway, so he might not have even realized that's what he was doing. This whole thing stank, but in the end it just seems like it was destined to not work out. Mina would just have to accept that. To be honest, you're taking it worse than either of us did, Achako joked, trying to lighten to mood. Hey, I worked really hard to get you two together. Mina huffed, crossing her arms. I know, I know, and I still really appreciate it. Achako rested a hand on her friend's shoulder, smiling as she gave a look Mina couldn't quite read. It must have been tough for you. The Pinquette raised an eyebrow at these words, then smirked. Heck yes it was. It took months for you to be able to talk to him without floating. This earned a small laugh from Achako. Right. The two were quiet for a moment. So, Mina played with her wine glass. You're alright, then. I mean, I'm definitely going to hold off on any serious dating for a little bit but... Yes, I'm fine. Achako frowned. Honestly, I think Izuku's still a bit upset though. Not at me, but... He just seems a bit out of it. He's walked off suddenly once or twice, and one time was when we bumped into each other. Oh no. Mina's face fell a bit as she looked at Izuku as well. Poor guy. But I thought you said he agreed you guys should break up. He did. But still, Achako looked at Mina again. Maybe you can talk to him. WH me. Mina whirled around. Like, about the breakup and stuff. Her brunette friend shrugged. Yeah, sort of. You're good at cheering people up, you know. And, well. She paused. Just think about it, okay. It's probably not a good idea for us to talk about it. Yeah, definitely not. Mina and Ijiro did the same thing back when they split up. A solid week or two of not really talking, just to give themselves time to adjust. Tell you what, if I think he's acting funny I'll talk to him, okay. She probably would have done that anyway. Thanks. Achako smiled softly. Wow, completely killed our mood, huh? This is supposed to be a party. She poured herself a fresh glass of wine, offering to top off Mina's. Yes please. Mina didn't intend to go too crazy tonight, but a little buzz wouldn't hurt. They clinked their now filled glasses and looked around the room, trying to think of something to say in order to change the subject. Oh, so did you hear. Achako finally spoke. Mind is dating someone now. Mina's jaw dropped. Shut the hell up. Her response prompted laughter from Achako. You're kidding, right? Nope. Trust me, I though the same thing too. Minoru had learned to control himself around his classmates a bit more over the years, but he was still very open about how perverted he was. To hear that he was in a relationship was almost scary. Mina frowned. Every guy she had talked to so far was seeing someone. She was obviously happy for them and planned to grill them all for the juicy details later, but she had been hoping to find someone she could flirt with a bit. Hearing Minoru of all people was spoken for made her wonder if any of the guys here were still single. Well okay, she knew one of them was now, but... So who's the lucky girl? Mina asked, trying to not think too much more about that topic. Remember Takage? Oh wow, that makes total sense. That girl was about as dirty as Minor was. Mina shuddered a bit as she imagined the sorts of things they likely had done together. Granted, she wasn't exactly an innocent flower herself. The fact that she had planned for the possibility of going home with a guy tonight proved that, even if it wasn't her primary goal. Going back to the single life wasn't so bad at first, but over the last few months Mina had felt more and more dissatisfied. She was still very much an independent person, but there were benefits to having a boyfriend that she missed. That feeling of companionship, that knowledge that here would be someone there for you whenever you needed them, and, well, sex. Mina wasn't ashamed to admit she really missed the last one. But it wasn't just the act itself she missed, but rather the feeling of doing it with someone you cared about. Someone you knew and had a connection with, at least on some level. It was why she didn't like the idea of just hooking up with some random stranger. At the same time though, she was a little nervous about dating again. After how she'd messed things up between herself and Ijiro, she was scared to fully commit to someone right away. She had taken things a little too far too fast in that regard, what with talking about when, not if, they'd be getting married and how many kids they'd be having. She had just been so enraptured with the idea of finally finding love that she didn't really stop and think things through. It was a bit of a paradox. She wanted to be with someone that mattered to her, yet she was hesitant about making a commitment. That's why tonight had presented a unique opportunity. These people had been through so much together over the years, and Mina felt a special connection with them all. If there was someone she could feel comfortable with taking home for a one-night thing, they'd be here. Maybe something more would come of it, or maybe not. Frankly, Mina was okay having a friend with benefits for now. Mina, a hand waving in front of her face drew the pink heroine from her thoughts. Huh, oh geez, sorry. She shook her head. You all good? Achako asked with a hint of concern in her voice. Not wanting to discuss her weirdly specific romance problems, Mina nodded. Yeah, I'm fine just. I was picturing Minta and Takage together, and well. You, don't put that image in my head. Achako made a face of disgust. Well you shouldn't have told me they were dating. A random thought popped into Mina's head, and she put a hand over her face. Oh god, I just remembered that video we saw once of that lizard eating a grape and now. S-T-O-O-O-P. Achako pleaded. Oh god, you, 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 you. I can never watch that again. Ugh. After taking a few moments to calm down and change subjects to something a bit less gross, the pair decided they should find others to talk to. Mina eyed the group Izuku and Ijiro were still in. I'm gonna go say hi them, haven't spoken to anyone over there yet. You wanna come? Achako looked. 
Uh, no, I probably shouldn't. Right, right. Well, I'll find you later, okay. Sounds good. The two girls hugged each other again before splitting off. It's not the most glamorous work, but someone needs to do it, Ijiro finished. Besides, it's all done to help folks get back on their feet. Feels good knowing I'm making a real difference. Yeah, with how much damage villain attacks can cause, those kind of programs are extremely important. People shouldn't have to lose their homes just because someone decided to start trouble nearby, Izuku said, nodding. Still, sounds like some hard work. Sure is. But it's fulfilling, you know. And it's pretty fun punching the hell out of old buildings. Ijiro turned to look at the other person he was talking to. Honestly, Bakugu, you should consider applying to one. Your quirk's perfect for that kind of stuff, and the pay's pretty good. Katsuki Bakugu looked at his classmate for a moment before answering. I have considered, actually. Honestly, I would if I wasn't so fucking busy with everything else. The three men were discussing Ijiro's current job, which was part of a program that aided in the reconstruction of damage infrastructure during villain attacks. His role in particular was to help demolish buildings that were badly damaged but not fully collapsed, which he did by simply walking in with his quirk and bringing them down with his bare hands. It definitely was work that suited him, and it went a long way in helping to clear areas for fresh construction. Izuku was glad to hear his friend had found a way to help out the community like that. Fighting off villains was important and all, but it was hardly the only thing a good hero needed to do. Most people didn't seem to realize that, unfortunately. Fortunately, Izuku's old classmates were not most people. He'd spent the last hour talking to a lot of his old friends and finding out what they had been up to, and most of them seemed to be in similar situations to Ijiro. Whether they were sidekicking, continuing school, or doing their own thing, they had all been finding ways to help those in need besides punching bad guys. Even Katsuki, who more than anyone here cared about winning against villains. Izuku looked at his old friend with a small smile. He was dressed in a simple white dress shirt with tan pants, evidently not feeling the need to dress up much for this. His hair was the same mess of spikes he had back in high school, and like everyone else here he had grown taller and clearly more fit. But he had also grown as a person. Though still foul-mouthed and a bit short-tempered, Katsuki wasn't nearly as aggressive as he once was. His intensity hadn't diminished, mind you, but he went about it in a far healthier way. He had actually started treating people like friends again over the last few years, and he even apologized to Izuku for how he had treated him way back in middle school. Right, you're doing school in a psychic job, aren't you? Ijiro asked. Yep, can't become number one if you're not going to put in the work. Katsuki eyed Izuku as he said this with a small smirk. While the two UA stars were definitely friends again, they were still rivals at the same time. Neither one was going to sit by and let the other surpass them. Clearly Katsuki was making a jab at Izuku for only going to college. You're right, the green-haired hero said, his smile growing. That's why I try to volunteer with all sorts of different agencies in my spare time. Figure it's better than just tying myself down to one agency so I can learn more. He didn't actually think that, there were benefits to having a singular mentor. But he wasn't about to let Katsuki's comment go without a rebuttal. HMPH. His friend turned rival's eyes narrowed slightly as the two stared each other down for a few seconds. Whoa, since when did you get so sassy, Midoriya? A woman's voice called out. The three men turned to see that a familiar pink face had joined them. Ashido, Izuku greeted warmly, a small blush tinting his freckled cheeks. His little standoff with Katsuki probably looked a bit silly. It was true he had grown a lot bolder since his early days at UA. But he certainly didn't consider himself sassy. Oh, hey, we were just... Having a dick measuring contest, it sounded like Mina finished with a sly smirk. Ijiro made a sound that was halfway between a snort and a laugh as Katsuki simply glared at her. Izuku's blush spread to his whole face as he looked away, earning a small laugh from the girl. She wasn't exactly wrong, but did she really have to say it like that? Pretty much, Ijiro agreed. Nobody asked you, Katsuki spat. He relaxed his gaze after a few seconds, nodding once at Mina. Nice to see you, Ashido. You too, back you go. He didn't fight Mina when she went to hug him, giving a somewhat half-hearted one back. Yeah, how have you been? Ijiro was more earnest with his hug, showing that there really weren't any hard feelings between them despite their breakup. Fantastic, thanks. She finally turned to Izuku, a sunny smile on her face. He gulped slightly as she embraced him, awkwardly returning the gesture as he tried to hide the blush still lingering on his cheeks. She seemed to hold him a bit longer than the other two, but that may have just been his brain being weird. Girls no longer scared him like they used to, but it was still weird to be suddenly hugged by one like this to him, especially given how he'd been feeling the last few days. He shook his head, forcing familiar thoughts out before they crept into his skull. Now wasn't the time for that. That's a sweet outfit, Mina. Ijiro complimented. Very you. Thanks. I thought so too. Mina agreed as she released Izuku and turned back toward her ex. It was true, it did suit her. The blue and black complimented her skin tone extremely well. And the way those shorts hugged her body, showing off her curves. And that gap at the thighs that showed just how toned her legs had become. Izuku's body tensed up as he realized just what was going through his mind. He looked away from Mina's backside as his face fumed. What was the matter with him? This honestly wasn't the first time tonight he had been having unbecoming thoughts about his female classmates, but it was the first time he had straight-ogled someone. 
He took a small breath. Yes, Mina was very much an attractive girl. She always had been, really, but this was something else. He'd heard she had been working under Maruko, and it showed she had quite a bit more muscle mass now, especially in her legs. She wasn't nearly as buff as the bunny hero, but it was still a very noticeable change. She also clearly had a growth spurt, and was actually a little taller than Izuku was now. Still, that was no excuse for what he'd just done. He was grateful nobody else had noticed. What about you, Midoriya? Mina asked suddenly. Huh, Izuku had apparently missed part of a conversation during his little internal freakout. What have you been up to? Gotten a handle on that one for all thing yet. Hearing those words made the quirk inheritor immediately forget about his worries. The truth had been out for a long time now, but it still gave him pause when his friends mentioned one for all and everything surrounding it like it was nothing. The secret had been revealed in their final year at UA, when the conflict with the League of Villains had come to a climax. Shigaraki and his group were ultimately thwarted, but in the process the truth of Izuku's quirk had been dragged into the light. The aftermath had been difficult, to say the least, but he had gotten through it. Now it was public knowledge, and while Izuku wasn't exactly happy about that nothing bad had come of it yet, all for one was gone for good now, and with the League's defeat crime had gone down significantly. Well uh, still haven't fully mastered all of it yet, but I'm working hard at it every day. Even now, he still had a long way to go before he could truly call himself the new symbol of peace. The college program I'm in has definitely helped a lot, though. Oh right, you're in college. Whereabouts? The four friends conversed for a little while, with Mina doing most of the talking. They shared stories about their current jobs or classes, some current news, and a few other random topics. By the way, wanted to ask, Ijiro, any new girls in your life I should know about? Mina asked at one point with a pointed grin. The question caught Ijiro off guard a bit, and his face went a bit flush as he looked at his shoes. Well, er, I have been seeing someone recently, but, not a girl. There was a small pause as he rubbed the back of his head. I've, uh, been figuring some stuff out about myself the last few months. Mina's was briefly looked stunned at this answer, but a second later she was all smiles as she bobbed up and down on her feet excitedly. Oh my gosh, what's his name? Where'd you meet him? How long have you been seeing him? As the two talked about Ijiro's new boyfriend, Izuku felt familiar thoughts seeping back into his head. Almost instinctively he turned to look around the room, spotting Achako in the distance talking to a few other friends. He lingered on her for a moment before forcing himself to look away. What about you? Ijiro decided to turn the question around on Mina, who laughed lightly. Still single, at the moment. Izuku's eyes snapped towards her, surprised to hear that. Really? Well, I'm sure you'll find someone, Ijiro assured her with an encouraging smile. I mean, if I can do it, anyone can. Hey, don't sell yourself short. Mina turned to Katsuki. Suo, anyone special in your... Fuck no, I don't have time for that kind of shit, the blonde interrupted. Mina's expression suggested she expected that response. Oh, don't ask him that. Katsuki gestured his head towards Izuku. Your Raka and him broke up, and he's still pretty. Aw oh, shit. He smacked the side of his head. All the sounds around Izuku seemed to muffle as he closed his eyes, Katsuki's words being the final straw. Familiar, unpleasant thoughts swarmed into his head and nodded him like locusts. He had screwed up. He hadn't been what she needed. He had let her down. He had lied to her. Look, Deku, I'm sorry. Izuku didn't let Katsuki finish before he stormed off, fighting back a couple tears as he did. He knew he was overreacting. He knew Achako wasn't even upset with him. But for some reason he couldn't shake the guilt he had been feeling ever since their last talk. They had broken up because of him. She had waited so long to work up the courage to confess to him, and he had let her down. And why? Because in the end, he didn't actually like her that way. He had tricked himself, and her, into thinking that he did. If he had just turned her down, that would be one thing. But he let her on, pretended to return her feelings. He hadn't meant to, of course, but that didn't change the fact that he did. He sighed loudly to himself. This wasn't the first time this had bubbled up tonight, and he didn't want to be in this state around his friends. He just needed a few minutes to himself to calm down and focus on other things, then he'd be right back. I just need some air. Dude, why would you say that? Ijiro yelled at Katsuki with a stern look. It was an accident, for fuck's sake. Katsuki shouted back with a hint of that fiery anger he was infamous for. I just was trying to. He growled. Me and my goddamn mouth. I should go talk to him. Hearing Katsuki say something like that was still quite a shock to Mina. She knew he had calmed down a bit over the years. It was still somewhat surreal to see him actually worrying about Izuku. No way man, you'll probably just say something else dumb. I'll talk to him, Ijiro insisted. Oh like you won't screw up, rocks for brains. His friend spat back. Guys, stop. Mina was tempted to watch them go at it, but there was no time for that. Let me do it. The pair simultaneously turned to look at her. I mean no offense, but I think I'll do a much better job than either of you. Her two classmates eyed her for a moment before Katsuki finally spoke. Yeah, probably, he admitted. Good point. You've always been good at cheering him up, Ijiro noted. I'm good at cheering everyone up, IG, Mina boasted with a wink and a smile. I'll be right back. As she headed off in the direction Izuku had went, though, her face grew more serious. Her questioning Ijiro about his relationship was both genuine curiosity and a way to check if Izuku really was still bothered by the breakup. 
Based on how he reacted just now, it was more than clear what the answer was. But hadn't Achako said he had agreed ending their relationship was a good idea? If so, why was he so torn up about the whole thing? Nina doubted Achako had lied. It didn't take long for the curious girl to find her quarry. Not too far from the living room was a glass door that led out to a deck overlooking the small hillside the house had been built on. Izuku stood with his back to the door, leaning over the deck's railing. Mina slowly turned the handle on the door and opened it, stepping outside. Izuku didn't hear the door opening behind him. He was too wrapped up in his own head, muttering to himself as he vocalized his thoughts. While he had managed to stop freaking out and calm down a little, there was still a lot of his mind. Still talking to yourself, huh? He jumped a bit as Mina's voice startled him, then quickly turned around. Yes, old habits really do die hard. Mina shut the door behind her as Izuku silently stared at her. Then he sighed lightly, turning back to look out at the sunset. I should have known you'd come after me, he said, earning a small chuckle from Mina. What can I say? I worry easily. She paused, then said in a more serious tone, Mind if we talk. Izuku's first instinct was to say that he did in fact mind. He had come out here to be alone, to collect himself. But if there was anyone he could see himself comfortably talking about this with, it was Mina. She was Achako's best friend and honestly had played a big part in getting them to start dating in the first place. Plus, she had a knack for helping him feel better whenever he was down. Having a mutual friend in Achako meant the two of them had gotten fairly close over the years. Her peppy attitude had gotten him out of a slump or two in the past. No, we can talk, Izuku finally answered, prompting Mina to walk up beside him. She set her glass down on the railing, noticing he had done the same with his own, and took a moment to look him over. Izuku had really grown since she first met him. He was of course taller, though Mina had managed to outgrow him by just a few inches, but also a lot bigger in a muscular sense. He was built a lot like Tenya or that guy Mirio now, with a broader torso and shoulders and thicker arms and legs. In short, he looked much more like a man now, though his face retained that cute boyishness Mina had always loved. He'd even maintained the same hairstyle, much like her. She felt a small warmth in her cheeks as she realized she was probably lingering on his chest a little too long. It wasn't like she could even see anything. The guy had on a dark green suit jacket with a white dress shirt under it, and pants to match. Everything was covered, though she did like the adorable little red bow tie he had on. Pushing aside her clear attraction for now, she leaned on the deck in the same way her companion was. Achako told me everything. Izuku reflexively clenched the railing for a half second, but quickly relaxed. Well, her version at least, said she thought it would be best for you guys to split up, and it didn't take a lot to make you agree. That true, Mina decided not to mince words, which Izuku appreciated, even if it stung just a bit. Yeah, that's about right. He had definitely been caught off guard when Achako brought up the notion of breaking up at first. What else did she say? Might as well see how much she knew. But she did it because the real you wasn't quite the same as the you she had made up in her head. Yes, that's also true. Izuku sighed again as he recalled her words. How did she put it? That she had forgotten I was Izuku, not Deku. If that makes sense. Yeah, I get it, Mina said. Uh, anything else? There was a reason Achako had started to think Izuku wasn't the same guy she had fallen for. The real issue with their relationship. Yeah, Izuku gulped. She felt like, well, Mina hesitated, noticing Izuku's sudden apprehension that you never actually had real romantic feelings for her. Not the way she had them for you, anyway. She could see him tensing up as she said this, his grip on the deck tightening again as he shut his eyes for a moment. There was a pregnant pause before he finally spoke. She, she was right, he admitted. I, I guess I never really liked her that way. I just, he trailed off, shaking his head. Mina frowned, now starting to get why he was so upset about this. I, I didn't mean to lead her on, I just, I do care about her, and I'd never dated anyone before. So when she asked me out, I just, said yes without really thinking about it, Izuku explained, staring ahead. I mean, we were friends, and she liked me, so that meant I had to like her back. At least that's how I saw it. You didn't want to upset her, Mina surmised. Izuku nodded. That too. Plus, well, I'd never had a girl be interested in me like that before. Mina felt a small tightness in her stomach as he said this, but it lasted only a moment. That wasn't true, but he had no way of knowing that, did he? Well, where did they come from? She hadn't thought about her old crush on Izuku in ages. Yes, it was true. Mina had feelings for her green-haired classmate at one point. It had started as a simple oh wow he's cute when she first laid eyes on him, but it slowly grew as time passed. It wasn't until their first culture festival, however, that she acknowledged it as a full-fledged crush. That had been the first time she hung out with him alone, and it made her come to terms with some things. The only reason she never wound up asking him out was, well, Achako. The day Mina discovered that who her friend's secret crush was, everything changed. Her feelings for Izuku were nothing major. To her, she was a cute, kind-hearted and brave guy she wanted to get to know more. But Achako's feelings were on a whole other level. At the time, Mina felt it was true love, and she wasn't about to get in the way of that. And so she gave up her little crush, opting to aid her best friend in her quest for romance instead. Seriously, what prompted this? Was it because Izuku was single again? The fact that she was just checking him out. The wine. It wasn't like she still liked him that way. That was years ago, and she had moved on. 
Hadn't she? She thought back to her talk with Ochako. Her friend had said a couple odd things, and she seemed really insistent on having Mina talk to Izuku. Had she known? Ashido? Ah, uh, Mina yelped as a voice cut through her thoughts. She glanced over at a slightly startled Izuku. Ugh, yes sorry, I kind of spaced out there. Think I've had a little too much to drink? She lied. Ugh, she was supposed to be having a heartfelt talk with a friend, not reminisce about old crushes. Sorry, you were saying. Well, I was saying I've never really had a girl like me like that before, and I think I was just so excited that I didn't think about it. I just, you wanted a girlfriend. Mina finished Izuku's thought, now focused on the task at hand again. Yeah, pretty much. Izuku paused again, leaning forward even more and resting his head in his arms. Then I guess I just never questioned my feelings for her. Well, it's not like you had another relationship to compare, you know. It's tough figuring out what liking someone that way feels like. Mina understood why Izuku had done what he did completely. She knew all too well how the excitement of being in a relationship could make someone act without thinking. I know, but I just, I don't know, I can't help but feel like I hurt her. I, I didn't mean to, but I made her think we were in love when, well... Anyone ever tell you you blame yourself way too much? Mina asked, half smiling. She stood up straight, closing the distance between herself and Izuku. Look, Midoriya, Ach is a big girl. She liked you, yes, really liked you. And believe me, I was super bummed to hear you guys broke up. But it's not like she won't move on. Izuku lifted his head off his arms as he looked at her. And I mean, it's not like you guys had a bad relationship. You had a solid year together, and you're still on good terms. That's way more than a lot of people can say. She rested a hand on his shoulder. You not liking her as much as you thought doesn't make that time together any less real. Izuku's eye looked at the ground as he let those words sink in. It was true that he enjoyed being with her, if only because it made her so happy. And look, as much as I don't want to believe this, I don't think you guys would have stayed together even if you liked her. This statement made Izuku's eyes snap back up to look at Mina with shock. I know that sounds bad but Acha, you could never have been the version of you she had invented. Trust me, I've been there. Izuku tilted his head slightly at this, but quickly realized what she was referring to. Ajiro really looked up to Mina, idolized her even. The fact that he had changed his hair to look a bit like hers showed that. But Izuku knew better than anyone else that oftentimes your idols aren't quite the people you thought they were. Had that affected Ajiro and Mina's relationship the same way it seemed to have affected his and Achako's. Plus, think about what Achako would want. Do you think she'd you want you moping around for her sake? Mina took her hand off his shoulder and folded her arms as she said this. I, Izuku stood up straight as he trailed off. Holy crap, why had he not considered that? He had been so busy beating himself up about how he'd let Achako down that he never bothered stopping to really think about she'd feel. Of course she wouldn't want him feeling sorry for himself like this. You're right. The freckled boy shook his head, smiling a bit. His mind was clear again, and it made him realize just how silly he was being. God, I feel really stupid now. Aw, oh, don't be like that. It was sweet of you to worry about. He stumbled back a bit as Mina playfully punched his shoulder, giggling. You just care too much for your own good sometimes. Izuku let out a small groan as he rolled his eyes slightly. I swear, if I had a yin for every time I heard that. He said in an exasperated tone. Mina snorted a bit as her giggling broke into full laughter. Izuku looked at her with a stern face for a moment, but his mouth started twitching. Soon his own laugh joined Mina's. They calmed down after several seconds, both of them staring at the other. You're amazing, you know that right. Izuku propped an elbow on the railing and rested his cheek in his hand. It had only taken her minutes to talk him through something that had been gnawing at him for days. I do, Mina answered with a wink, earning another round of laughter from both of them. Really though, I, thanks, I needed this. He smiled warmly at her. Hey, what are friends for? She returned the gesture, giving Izuku a fluttering feeling in his stomach. Something about Mina's smile had always gotten to Izuku. He couldn't quite explain why, it just radiated joy in a way that was downright infectious. Same with her laugh. Besides, you're a lot cuter when you're smiling like this, she added. There was a time a comment like that would have floored Izuku. He'd sweat and stutter and possibly even run away. However, he'd matured a good bit over the years, and his reaction was less dramatic. Oh, um, thank you. He spoke quietly, looking at his feet as a noticeable shade of crimson crept onto his cheeks. Mina's smile widened a bit at this, he obviously still wasn't used to flirting. She liked this more subdued, shy awkwardness. With the serious discussion over with and Izuku back to his normal self, Mina decided to have a little fun. She was initially hesitant to try anything with Izuku given the circumstances, but those memories of her old crush were beginning to change her mind. Besides, what was the harm in messing with him a bit? If he wasn't interested, she'd stop. But given what she'd seen him doing earlier, you're very welcome, she said, picking up her wine glass as she relaxed against the railing a little. Izuku could immediately feel the change in atmosphere. There was a noticeable difference in Mina's tone and posture just now. He stared at her, picking up on the fact that her eyes were slightly narrowed as she looked back. Her smile was a little more subdued, looking almost playful. It was a subtle but effective transformation. 
He wanted to say something, but the words caught in his throat as he continued to stare. That fluttery feeling in his stomach returned, stronger than before. See something you like? Mina suddenly asked, raising an eyebrow. Realizing how he must have looked studying her the way he was, Izuku shook himself a bit. Why? He stood up straight, clearing his throat as he felt his face heating up. Sorry, I was just staring longingly into my eyes. This was too easy. Izuku responded to her jest by looking back out to the hillside, inhaling deeply. She giggled playfully, rolling the stem of her wine glass back and forth along her fingers a little. Izuku was not sure what to make of this situation. This behavior had come completely out of nowhere. Did she want him to play along? Did he want to play along? The flustered boy could be a bit oblivious, but he even he could tell what Mina was doing here. He just couldn't decide what he thought of that. Part of him wanted to just go back inside and forget this had happened, but another part of him wanted to see where this went. Maybe a lit, he finally said with a nervous chuckle. They're very, her, unique. Mina's eyes sparkled a bit. Unique, huh? The fact that he had responded to her tease like that was a good sign. Now to go in for the kill. Oh, and by the way, you're not as sneaky as you think. Huh? Izuku looked at her again, unsure what she meant. Her mouth twisted into a Cheshire grin, which worried him greatly. I saw you checking out the goods earlier, she said, winking as she waggled her rear just a bit. There was a heavy silence as Izuku processed her words and gesture. It took a few seconds for it to click as he recalled how he had caught himself admiring Mina's outfit a little too much earlier. For a moment his eyes glazed over as his face turned ghost white. Then he felt his temperature spike as his whole face turned beet red. W-H. But, and no, I. It was just like the old days. Sounds that were supposed to be words tumbled out of his mouth as he frantically tried to think of something, anything he could say. W well, that's. No, you see, I was just. Mina watched gleefully as the panicked boy tripped over his words, his hands flailing about. You were just what? She asked coyly, which did nothing to help his mood. I didn't. I wasn't trying. Uwag. Izuku slumped over the railing in defeat. He had been caught red-handed, and there was nothing he could possibly say to convince Mina that she had the wrong idea. Okay, yes I, I was staring. He couldn't bring himself to look at her. I mean, I wasn't trying to it just happened, like that made it any better. The ashamed hero expected to be slapped, yelled at, or possibly even tossed off the deck. What he did not expect was for Mina to laugh. Not that that was much better. Wasn't trying to. Oh, you are just precious, she said, shaking her head. Midoriya, look at me. There was a hint of authority in her voice, but it was still somehow gentle. Reluctantly Izuku turned his head a little so he could see her. Much to his surprise, she was still smiling at him. Relax, I'm not mad. You're not. Izuku had seen how Mina had reacted to Denki and Minoru's antics over the years. She seemed to have little patience for that kind of stuff. Nah, not really, she replied, taking a sip of her drink. I mean, I don't blame you. I have a pretty awesome ass. She patted it once for emphasis. And I have worked very hard to keep it that way. Izuku felt steam coming out of his ears as she went on. B but I, th that's not the point. He cried, standing up again. Just because you have a nice butt doesn't mean I can just. Oh God. Realizing what he said, he put a palm to his face, groaning. Mina threw back her head in laughter. All right, yes. That doesn't make it okay to stare. Boot. Mina suddenly drew closer, placing her free hand on her hip. Maybe I like the fact that you were staring. It's okay then, right. She punctuated this last bit with another wink. No, I guess you didn't. Seeing how regretful he was made Mina think that he was probably telling the truth when he said he didn't mean to. There had certainly been times where her eyes wandered on their own. Well, I'm sure you'll find some way to make it up to me. I. Izuku exhaled deeply through his mouth and looked out at the sunset once again. He was walking down a very unfamiliar road right now, and he had to decide if he wanted to turn around and forget this had ever happened, or keep going and see where it led. Mina was interested in him, that much was certain. The question was, was he interested in her? He wasn't really sure. Yes, she was attractive, incredibly so, and yes, she made him feel kind of funny inside, but how much of that was just his brain coping with suddenly being single? Regardless of how he ultimately felt about Achako, he had still enjoyed being in a relationship. After a tough day of hero work, nothing beat a nice long cuddle on the couch. Just knowing you had someone you could be that close with, physically and emotionally, was something he missed. Making a decision, he tried to relax a little as he turned back to Mina. So, is there a reason you liked that I was looking? He wasn't exactly good at playing this game, but he'd give it a try. Well, Mina glanced to the side as she took her hand off her hip and started playing with one of the curls in her hair. It's just nice knowing someone like you thinks I'm that attractive. As someone like me. He stammered just a bit, but kept a cool face. Mina giggled, finding his obvious inexperience with all this charming. What do you mean by that? Oh, you know. Cute, funny, sweet, single. She paused as the last word left her mouth, mentally kicking herself oh, shoot, sorry. Given how Izuku was feeling just a few moments ago, that didn't exactly feel appropriate to say. This time, it was Izuku's turn to laugh. It's fine. In truth the word did sting a little, but only for a nanosecond. 
I mean, it's true after all. Seeing she hadn't offended him, the pink flirt quickly settled back into her role. The two gazed at each other wordlessly, drawing ever so closer. Both their heart rates were accelerating as the tension in the air grew and grew. Mina then rested her free hand on the deck railing and slowly slid it forward until it was atop Izuku's. This first contract served as something of a wake-up call for the nervous boy. The reality of where this was all potentially leading fully started to set in, and with that came a new feeling. He drew his hand back almost reflexively, much to Mina's surprise. Huh, she noticed Izuku tense up a little, his expression looking almost afraid for a split second. Then he let out a sigh. I am sorry, Ishido, I just... He gulped. I just... I don't know about this. About what? Mina felt her heart sink a little. She thought she'd had him, but it seemed he was still having doubts. This, Izuku answered, gesturing between the two of them. What we're doing here? I... What's the matter? Switching back to caring friend mode, Mina's voice softened. Well, I just... I mean, after what happened with me and Achako, I don't know if... The prospect of another relationship was exciting but scary. His mind was all over the place, and he didn't know how he truly felt about Mina at this point. What if they started dating and he realized he didn't actually like her? He couldn't go through that again. Don't know if you're ready for a relationship. She was really good at finishing his sentences. He nodded, prompting a small yet encouraging smile. That's alright, I understand. I honestly don't think I am either. Huh, if that was true, why had she done all this? I mean, I might be. I don't really know yet. But, she placed her hand on Izuku's again. This doesn't have to be a relationship. Not, not yet, anyways. Izuku kept his hand where it was as he tried to understand her words. You mean, we just... He paused, not wanting to make any assumptions about where tonight could go. You're saying you're okay if this is just a... A one-time thing. I'm saying I want to be with you tonight, but just... As a friend, you know. Mina rubbed her finger and thumb over Izuku's hand. If something comes of it, great. But if not, well, I'm fine with that too. Her freckled friend contemplated this notion. Was it really okay for them to do this sort of stuff without being a couple? He supposed it wasn't an issue if they were both fine with it, and she clearly was. But was he? Well, he knew being with Mina made him feel good. And he couldn't deny the prospect of getting a little more intimate with her was rather enticing. Izuku suddenly reached across the railing and grabbed his half-filled glass of wine. He stared at it as he thought about what he should do for a few moments longer. Then, taking a quick breath, he downed the rest of his glass in one fell swoop, slammed it down, then turned to Mina as he wiped his mouth. I'm going to look at your butt so much tonight, he said with his best attempt at a sexy smile. Mina's response was to stare blankly at him, blinking a few times. Izuku's expression slowly faltered as he watched her lips start to twitch. Pfffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffffff
Nah, probably not. Assuming he knows what's good for him. Her new partner for the night let out a huge sigh of relief. Part of him felt a little weird that Mina's ex had seen him doing that with her, but considering Ijiro was in another relationship now he figured it didn't bother him much. He was probably just surprised. With the mood completely dead, Ijiro's presence reminded the couple that there were in fact other people they had come here to talk to. All right, we've been out here long enough, Mina said. As fun as this was, she'd never forgive herself if she blew off the rest of her friends much longer. What do you say we head back inside and, uh, we'll figure out what we want to do after the party's over. Mina suggested, snuggling up against Izuku and drawing a circle on his chest with her finger. He responded by turning his head up and softly brushing his lips against hers. Mina let out a small happy squeak at the gesture. Sounds good to me. The two walked back into the house, Mina's arm wrapped around Izuku's. The rest of the evening went by quick. Laughs were shared, games were played, and friendships were rekindled. The most exciting part of the night happened when Kayoka implied she could hold her liquor better than Katsuki could. Mina had actually judged. In the end, it was really hard to tell who had won, as they were both completely smashed by the end. Nu, you're wa, a hick drunker than Mme, bomb boy. Kayoka slurred as she jabbed a finger at her opponent, swaying a little. Like fuck I am, USA stupid. Fuckin, fuck. Katsuki stumbled, having to grab a table for support. A large array of empty shot glasses lay between them as a crowd looked on. Yeah, I gotta go with a tie, Mina decided, honestly impressed with how much it had taken to get either of them this drunk. WH ha ha God damn. Raccoon ice, you. Katsuki took a step towards her and completely lost his balance, toppling to the floor. I'm the number one. He mumbled into the floor, apparently about to pass out. PFF ha ha. You are dumb bitch. I, who. Kayoka began mocking the fallen blonde before she suddenly clutched her stomach. Uh oh, excuse me, excuse me. Momo appeared from seemingly nowhere with a bottle of water, grabbing Kayoka. Come with me, dear. Yes, this way. Mina looked at her apologetically. Uh, sorry about this. Momo sighed. No, it's fine. I expected she would have done something like this. Don't worry, I'll take care of them. A gagging sound from the girl slumped over her made the hostess begin fast walking towards another room. Kayoka, please just hold it until we get to the bathroom. Oh, okay, hun. Everyone looked down at the now snored Katsuki. Ajira was the one to step forward. All right, buddy, let's find somewhere to put you, he muttered, carefully lifting the drunk up. As the crowd dispersed, Mina saw Chaco approach her. Well, that was something, the brunette said, an amused smirk on her face. To be honest, I figured you'd be the one getting that drunk tonight. Mina had gone pretty hard at some parties in the past. Well, I wanted to remember this one, the pinquette joked. Fair, fair. Chaco paused for a moment. So, how is he? He's fine. You were right, he was mostly upset at himself. I managed to talk him out of it. Mina looked at her friend. He's still not sure he wants to talk to you directly just yet, but... No, I get it. Honestly, I feel the same. At least not for a couple more days. Yeah, probably for the best. He felt real bad, you know. Felt like he lied to you. Achako chuckled. I'm sure he did. She gave Mina a knowing smile. So, you two looked... Close. Er. Yes, we are. Uh. Mina rubbed the back of her head, feeling a bit awkward talking to Achako of all people about this. You are... Not upset, are you? Oh, of course not. The gravity hero laughed again. That's sweet of you to ask, though. Her expression grew more serious. No, I, I do wish it could have been like what I wanted, but that's just not how things went. But honestly, it's nice just not having to deal with a crush or relationship or anything like that. I feel way less stressed out. I can finally lie for me a little. Huh, that's a good point. Achako had been holding on to her feelings for Izuku for about four years. Not having to think about that anymore must have certainly been a load off her mind, at least somewhat. Besides, I always felt a bit guilty about you giving up on him for my sake. Didn't seem fair. Mina threw her head back at these words, sighing loudly. All right, how long did you know? She asked. Years, honestly. You're not very good at hiding that kind of stuff. Honestly, half the reason I waited so long to ask him out was because I felt bad taking him from you. But then you and Kirishima started dating, so. Wow. Rather than fight over a boy, the two of them had been too worried about the other's feelings to ask him out. Just, be good to him? Yeah. Achako asked, a sunny smile on her face. Mina mirrored her expression. Ah, you know I will. Now come here. The two embraced, their friendship having grown just a bit more. Before long, the night had come to an end. Everyone said their goodbyes to one another, promising to see each other again soon. The reunion was a rousing success, and there would most likely be another one next year. On one hand, Mina felt it had been too short. But on the other, she had been eagerly looking forward to the after-party. She found Izuku waiting for her at the door. She walked up to him, grinning from ear to ear. They had stayed together for a good portion of the night, though had gone their separated ways for the last while. Hey, babe, Mina greeted, immediately grabbing hold of his arm. You are ready to go. They had decided to go back to Mina's apartment after the party, as between their two addresses it was closer. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Mina couldn't help but notice he looked a bit distant. Something wrong. She frowned. 
He wasn't having second thoughts, was he? Oh, um, Hizuku shook his head. Not really, just uh, I was talking to Mindo a bit ago, and he decided to show me a picture of him and his girlfriend kissing. It was, uh, he paused. Well, she had taken her head off and was holding it down to his level, and it just looked. A.W. Nina shivered, recalling those horrible images she had conjured. It sounded like poor Izuku had actually seen one, albeit much tamer than the ones in her head. Don't tell me that. Sorry. It was just. Wow. He decided to try to get as far away from that subject as possible. Anyway, shall we? Yes, please. The pair headed out. For them, the night had only just begun. Both Izuku and Mina couldn't help but feel a little anxious throughout the trip to the latter's apartment. They tried to distract themselves with random conversation, but there was a lingering tension neither of them could deny. Part of that came from the simple fact that they were in public and had to restrain themselves, but there were other reasons as well. For Mina, a lot of it was just impatience. She was able to keep a handle on things earlier, but now that the reunion was done it was getting harder to fight her urges. She'd gotten a taste of Izuku earlier, and it only left her longing for more. The sooner they got home, the better. Izuku, meanwhile, was mostly nervous. He had been ever since he and Mina shared that moment on the deck, but he had been able to keep his mind off it during the party. Without that distraction, the reality of where tonight was likely going was really setting in. Thing is, he had never actually had sex before. Despite being with her for almost a year, he and Achako had never taken things that far. They had come close a few times, but Izuku just never felt ready. Something about taking that big step as a couple scared him, and it was only now that he understood why. It had actually been one of the first signs that something was wrong with their relationship. Would he be ready this time? Unlike with Achako, this wasn't some big relationship milestone, it was just sex with a friend. Did that make it better or worse? Was it okay for his first time to be with a girl he wasn't even really dating? That it wasn't some grand display of love. Izuku wanted to say no, but he was still human at the end of the day. He had the same desires and urges as everyone else. Had he masturbated before? Of course he had. Did it feel good? Of course it did. Obviously he wanted to experience the real thing. Plus, this wouldn't just be sex for its own sake. He and Mina 999 have a bond, just not necessarily a romantic one. He hadn't agreed to go home with her just because he found her attractive, but because he enjoyed being with her. In the end, he still didn't know how he felt about doing this. He'd have to make a choice soon, though. Well, here we are. Mina announced as she and Izuku got to her door. She was in a complex much like Izuku's old place, though the units were definitely smaller. The pair tried to ignore the pounding in both their chests as they entered the apartment. Mina shut and locked it as Izuku took a look around. The entrance opened up into one big single area that seemed to be contained both the kitchen and living room. The kitchen was on the left side, with a sink and range in the far corner and a table for dining closer to the entrance. On the right was a purple couch as well as some pink, black, and purple beanbag chairs surrounding a TV setup. There was a shelf with all sorts of random knickknacks that were mostly pink, purple, and black, and an adorable picture of a pile of Shiba Inu puppies playing on the wall. On the opposite wall from the entrance was a doorway that led down a small hall. Izuku could see a few doors in the hall, likely the bathroom, bedroom, and a storage closet or two. What do you think? Mina asked, giving him a moment to take it in. It's nice. Definitely very you, he answered with a small laugh. Oh trust me, this is nothing. Wait until we get to the bedroom. She winked as she said this, then motioned with her finger for him to follow. She walked through the living area toward the hallway at a rather slow pace. Izuku immediately noticed her hips swaying back and forth in a very deliberate manner as she moved. He lagged behind her as he stared, feeling zero shame or guilt this time. Mina turned her head slightly to look back at him, a playful smirk showing. Enjoying the view. Hizuku simply nodded in response. Good. They could both feel the pressure building and building as they got to the bedroom. Mina slowly opened the door and slipped inside, Izuku quickly following before she closed it behind them. Give me a second, Mina said softly as she walked over to fiddle with something. Izuku took in the sights around him as she did. It was more or less her room from UA. The bed, curtains, dresser, lampshades, clock, pretty much everything was a mix of purples, magentas, pinks, and blacks with either polka dots, hearts, or zebra stripes. There was a variety of posters lining the walls, including one of Maruko, several of what seemed to be famous dancers, and one of a scary-looking black monster that looked something like a combination of an ant queen and a T-Rex. Suddenly, very faint, mellow-sounding music started to play. The lights in the room dimmed and took on a dark blue and purple hue. The whole atmosphere changed in an instant as Izuku looked back towards Mina, who was moving back towards him. Just a little something for the mood. You like it. She spoke in a low voice, her expression that same seductive one she had been giving him back on the deck. I. Izuku didn't say much as he gazed at her, the lightning making her look even more striking than she already was. God you look amazing. He grabbed her waist and pulled her close as she rubbed a hand on his cheek. You don't look as bad yourself, hot stuff. Now, come to mama. All that tension that been building finally boiled over as Mina grabbed Izuku's face and crashed her lips hiss. She didn't bother wasting time letting things build as she immediately shoved her tongue in his mouth pressing herself against him. 
Within seconds they were in the midst of a rather rough and sloppy makeout, the loud smacking of their lips periodically interrupted by low grunts and heavy breaths. Mina's hands traveled front Izuku's face to his chest, feeling around as she tried to find the buttons on his undershirt. With some difficulty she got a few off before slipping her hands inside his shirt. Izuku shivered as he felt her hands touch his bare skin, rubbing up and down the sides of his torso. He felt Mina's lips curl into a smile as they kissed as she hummed in delight. He let one hand slide up the back of her shirt, rubbing her skin gingerly as his other hand more roughly groped at her rear. He squeezed a bit harder than he had been, causing Mina to arc her back slightly and part lips with him, letting out a small cry of pleasure. She became aware of a dampness in her panties, which only spurned her on. She moved her face back in, but didn't go for his lips this time. Izuku gasped as he felt her begin to suck and nip at his neck, traveling down on a line until she had his collarbone. He felt more and more of his buttons coming undone, as well as a growing tightness in his pants. Though his mind was clouded by lust and desire, he had enough clarity to recognize that they were getting to the point of no return. What should he do? As he struggled to try and think coherently, Mina took things even further after getting the last of his buttons off. His shirt now open by not off, she spun him around and suddenly shoved. Izuku barely had time to register what was happening before he felt himself falling backwards and landing on something soft. Glancing around, he realized he on Mina's bed. He swallowed hard, his mouth dry. Mina didn't notice his behavior as she impatiently threw off her leggings and shorts. Izuku finally looked back up just in time to see her shirt over her head, leaving in nothing but her black bra and underwear. Said underwear happened to be a thong, barely leaving anything down there to the imagination. There was a very noticeable dark spot on it. Throwing the shirt to the side, Mina stood over him with hand on her hip and an expression Izuku could only describe as hungry as she looked down at him, panting heavily. You gonna take that stuff off, or do I gotta do it? For you, she asked between breaths. While shirt was open, Izuku still had all his clothing on including his suit jacket. When he didn't answer, she crept forward and got onto the bed, straddling him as she knelt over him. Ashido, uh, Mina, tonight you can. Call me Mina. Mina felt almost frustrated that Izuku still hadn't taken his things off. Resting her hands on his chest, she slowly slid them down his torso to his waist, where she began undoing his belt. Izuku's mind raced. He thought he'd have an answer by now, but he still just wasn't sure what to do. And Mina clearly was done waiting. Come on Izuku, let's see what you've got under. Stop. Backed against a wall, Izuku suddenly cried out as he threw both his hands over Mina's. More than a little surprised by his outburst, Mina slowly drew out of his hormone-induced stupor as Izuku looked up at her. I, I'm sorry, I just, sighing, he took his hands off her and let them lay at his sides. Look, I've, never done this before. Mina took a second to make sure she heard him right, then sat up straight. You, you haven't, but, we never went all the way, Izuku interrupted, not wanting to mention names. Really, she knew Izuku and Achako could be shy, but she figured they must have had sex at some point. Yes, really, it was just, it never felt right to me, I guess. That was as much detail as Izuku wanted to go into. Fortunately, Mina seemed to get it. I see. Given how their relationship had turned out, she supposed that made sense. Didn't make it any less surprising though. So, do you want to stop then? She tried and failed to hide the disappointment in her voice. No, I just... Izuku sighed, trailing off. Do you want to stop? Mina's voice was firmer this time. We are not doing this if you don't feel ready. She didn't care how badly she wanted him. If he wasn't ready, he wasn't ready. I... I don't know. I'm just... I need a minute, okay. Mina got off him, sitting next to him on the bed. Okay, take all the time you need. She couldn't help but feel a little guilty, she had come on incredibly strong, which was probably part of why he was so freaked out. She wouldn't have done that if she had known he was still a virgin. Izuku took a breath and thought for a bit. How was he feeling right now? Everything had happened so quickly that he hadn't had time to really decide that. He'd been enjoying himself, that was for sure. The feel of Mina's skin against his, the taste of her lips on his own, the sight of her almost totally exposed, the sensual sounds she had made. Nearly all his senses had been filled with nothing but Mina, and it felt, well, good. And he clearly was making her feel the same. Did it really matter, then, that they weren't in a relationship? Did that suddenly make the bliss he had been feeling up until now mean anything less? No, he finally realized, it didn't. And frankly he was sick of denying that. Okay, Izuku spoke after a moment, looking at her with a calm expression. I'm ready. You sure? Mina asked. I'm not going to be upset if you say no. I know. Izuku looked her right in the eye. I'm sure. No more doubts or second guessing. He wanted this. He wanted her. Mina sighed with relief. Okay, good. Now then, with much more care than before, she slowly helped him getting out of his jacket and shirt. She moved back to her previous position, tracing a circle on his bare chest as she admired his figure. You are such a hunk, she said in what was almost a whisper. His arms were well-defined, biceps and triceps noticeable even without him flexing. His pecs were thick with muscle, jutting out just a bit. And she could feel how rock-hard his abs were as she drew across them. Despite her thirst, though, she had a completely different approach compared to before. Now that she knew this was Izuku's first time, she needed to take things just a bit slower. Ease him into things. She wasn't bothered by that fact. 
In fact, she was rather excited. Izuku's inexperience meant she was going to be in total control for the whole night, and she was perfectly fine with that. Izuku hadn't done anything since she had gotten back on top of him. He'd simply lain there, looking up at Mina with a smile. Now that he was calm again, he could more carefully admire her figure. And what a figure it was. Her arms were leaner than his overall, but just as defined. She had abs to rival his. And her legs. Oh god, her legs. He had once noted her thighs as strong and healthy, and that definitely still applied. They looked powerful enough to crush a watermelon, a fact that was turning him on more than he expected. Deciding they'd ogled each other long enough, Mina decided to move things forward. Reaching back, she unclasped her bra and let it fall. Pushing it off the bed, she cupped her bare breasts in her hand, squeezing one slightly. Sit up, babe, she instructed. Izuku, eyes now fixated on her chest, did as she said. Now I level with him, Mina put her hands on his waist, letting her boobs drop. Izuku's eyes bulged a little as he watched them bounce and jiggle as they did. She then leaned forward so they were inches apart. Go on, touch him. Izuku didn't hesitate as he put his hands on her chest and began to feel around. Mina shut her eyes, smiling as she enjoyed the feeling of her breasts being fondled. Him, him, him. They feel go. She asked, leaning in even more to kiss her bedmate. Him, him. MPH. Yeah. Izuku managed to get out between kisses. They're so big. And soft. And warm. He squeezed down on them a bit, earning a little laugh from Mina. They made out for a few more minutes, Izuku playing with his new friends as Mina massaged his chest and stomach. Deciding to escalate further, Mina reached up and took his hands off her. Before he could complain, though, she scooched forward and sat up a little, bringing her chest to Izuku's face. He didn't need to be told what to do. Mina hugged him around his shoulders and pulled him in as he began sucking, kissing, and licking her left boob. He could hear Mina panting slightly above him. The nipples the most sensitive, she hinted in a hushed voice. She then bit her lip as she felt his tongue zero in on that part of the breast, tracing circles on her nipple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her voice grew higher and higher pitched Izuku he began sucking at her harder and harder. Understanding what to do now, he switched to her other side and did the same, taking in whole mouthfuls of her as he savored the taste. Mina bent down so her head next to his, breathing right in his ear. She began grinding against his hips, her hands starting to move south. Wow, you're a natural, Izuku. She whispered in his ear, kissing his cheek. You're getting me so wet. Izuku felt his chest tighten as she said this, feeling her hot breath on his ear as she panted more and more heavily. He felt around with his hands, his vision blocked by Mina's cleavage, finding the perfect handhold on her bare ass. It felt good before, but now he could tell just how toned it really was. His pants were starting to get incredibly uncomfortable. As she was responding to this thought, the aroused boy felt Mina's hands at his belt. A moment later, his pants felt a little looser. Then he felt a great relief as Mina undid the button and zipper on them and slid them off partway, leaving his boxers exposed. He finally took his mouth off her breasts when he felt her hand slip underneath his underwear and grip him. Ugh. He cried out softly, shutting his eyes as he felt a surge of pleasure rush through his body. He looked up at Mina's face, who made an exaggerated gasp. Oh, Izuku, who's your little friend here? She asked with faux naivety. H&M. Uh, Izuku was still processing the feeling of Mina's hand on his cock, trying to fight the feeling building up inside him. Well, I guess I shouldn't say little, huh? Mina giggled as she began slowly sliding up Izuku's shaft. He's a big one, huh? Izuku grit his teeth, face twitching slightly as squeezed his eyes shut. He felt a slippery liquid coming from Mina's hand and coating his member as she slowly moved up and down it. He had to hold it in. It didn't matter how good this all felt, or how incredibly sexy Mina was being right now. I think he wants to say hi. What do you think, Izu? Mina smirked as she saw the look on her partner's face. Well, I, I. Izuku made the mistake of opening his eyes, coming face to face with Mina's gaze. For just a moment he focused on that and now the pressure building in his crotch. I, H. Mina was confused for hand a second, then suddenly felt something hot and sticky on her hand. Izuku's whole body tensed up as he began thrusting upwards, an intense relief washing over him as he came. Once it was all out, he fell back against the bed, Mina feeling his now limp cock flop onto its side. The two were silent and motionless for a few moments. Izuku stared up at the ceiling, catching his breath as he recovered. Then something finally clicked in his head, and his eyes widened. The calm relief he felt immediately vanished. He clenched one of his hand into a fist, pounding it down on the bed. Damn it, he muttered. Damn it, damn it, damn it. He spoke in rhythm with his fist hitting the bed. He had both literally and figuratively blown it. Finished before they had even really gotten started. A chaotic mix of emotions swirled in his head. Shame for losing it so quickly. Anger that he had let it happen. Disappointment that he hadn't actually gotten to experience the full thing. Most of all, though, he felt guilt. He wanted Mina to enjoy this just as much as he did, to give her just as much satisfaction as she had been giving him. But he'd clearly let her down. I'm, I'm sorry, Mina, I. What was there to say? He couldn't even bring himself to look at her he felt so bad. His eyebrows furrowed a bit as he heard the sound of her lips smacking on something. He had expected to hear a disappointed sigh, or something like really. Or even just laughter. What was this he was hearing? 
curiosity getting the better of him, he dared to glance at her. His eyes widened slightly at the sight of Mina slowly licking and sucking something off her right hand. The same hand that had been rubbing him down and that he had assuredly made a mess of. Mina simply looked at him, making very deliberate and exaggerated motions with her mouth as she savored the taste of his load. Once she had gotten the majority of it off her hand, she made one last pass on each of her fingertips like she had just finished a meal, then licked her lips. MMM. She hummed, a sunny smile on her face. After taking a moment to process the sight he had just witnessed, Izuku's confusion grew. Why? When her smile didn't drop, he sat up a bit. Are you? Not upset. Why would I be upset? Mina answered, giggling. Because I. He cut off when Mina put her left index finger to his lips. SSSSH. She hushed him, wiping her right hand on the sheets. She then took her finger off his lips and caressed his cheek gently with her left hand. Her expression grew calmer and more comforting. It's okay, Izu. Her voice was soft and gentle. While Mina was initially a little annoyed when Izuku came so soon, she quickly got over it. It wasn't exactly surprising given this was his first time. Now granted, some guys were fine with just getting off and calling it a night. But Mina knew Izuku, and judging by his reaction he probably felt terrible about himself right. Like with Achako, he was likely felt he had let Mina down in some way. She wasn't about to let him start beating himself up again, especially not for something that was by all accounts perfectly normal and understandable. If anything, she felt a little proud she had gotten him that aroused so quickly. First off, let's get you out of these messy things, she said, pulling off his soiled boxers with her free hand and dropping them off the bed. Now fully exposed, Izuku craned his neck up and looked at his member, blushing when she saw what was clearly some residue still on it. Mina then rolled off him once again and lied down on his left side, still caressing his cheek. Look, Mina, I, shush, I told you, it's okay. Mina turned onto her side so she was facing him. It happens to a lot of people, especially on their first try. Izuku said nothing, but mirrored her position so that they were now facing one another. He closed his eyes as her touch and voice soothed him somewhat. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. She gingerly brushed her lips against his forehead, taking her hand off his cheek and putting her arm around his shoulder. She scooched forward a little, giving him a half hug as they touched foreheads and noses. Her words and actions were definitely comforting, but guilt still racked Izuku's brain. Sex is about feeling good, doesn't matter if it doesn't always last long. Did you feel good? Yes. As brief as it was, Izuku couldn't deny how great it all felt. Mina gave him a peck on the lips in response. Good. She kissed him again. And remember, we can always try again later. But I, Izuku sighed, resting his hand on Mina's side and rubbing it gently. I want you to feel good too, and I feel like I screwed that up. As Mina thought, don't be silly. Of course you didn't. Another kiss for reassurance. But you, you didn't get to. Izuku seemed reluctant to say it out loud. Come, Mina chuckled. No, I guess not. But it hap. Ends. She trailed off as the gears in her head started spinning. Riello, you can still help with that, you know. I can. Izuku leaned back slightly so he could get a better look at her grinning face. Then it hit him. Oh, oh right. He knew enough about sex to know there were multiple ways to pleasure someone. Uh, well, WH what do you want me to do? He asked, sitting upright. What do I? Oh wow you have no idea how nice it feels to hear that. Mina laughed, sitting up as well. A golden opportunity had presented itself to the pink girl. As far as she knew, there were a lot of guys out there who were much more concerned with their own pleasure than their partners. But she could feel how eager Izuku was to do, in his own words, whatever she wanted. Eat my pussy. Why? Izuku was caught off guard by the bluntness of her request. Mina blushed, not meaning to be that forward. She was just a bit excited about this prospect. Oral sex was something she pretty much never got to experience with Ijiro. Part of it was simply that he didn't want to do it. But the few times he actually did, it was not exactly the best experience. The unfortunate reality was his incredibly sharp teeth made that sort of thing rather risky, and he had to be very careful. Er, shrugging, she decided to roll with what had said. You heard me. That cool with you. Uh, I guess so, but I don't know if I'd be good at it. Mina giggled. Of course that would be his primary concern. It's not so hard. Just take your time and I'll guide you. She winked at this last bit. Izuku thought for a moment. The thought of eating Mina out was a little nerve-wracking, but at the same time tantalizing. Besides, he wanted to give her as good a time as possible. Okay. Uh, how do I? Mina snorted a bit as she continued laughing. God, you're so precious. Here, I'll show you. Standing up, she turned around and slowly removed her panties. Izuku got a good look at her full moon before she slowly turned and got back on the bed. She climbed on top of him like she had before, then gently grabbed his face with both hands and kissed him deeply. He kissed back, his arms around her waist. Before they could get too into it, though, Mina grabbed his shoulders and began gently pushing down on them as she scooched forward. Izuku understood what she wanted and relaxed, letting her slowly push HM down. He didn't take his lips off her, though, he left a string of kisses down her neck, sucked at her teat once again, and even gave her abs some love as she slid past them. He was a little surprised at how quickly they were able to get back in the mood. Before he knew it, he was lying on his back again. 
Nina straddled him, her rear planted squarely on his chest and her knees resting on each side of his head. She reached down and rested her hands on his cheeks. Whenever you're ready, she said. Izuku gulped, eyes darting around. He was flanked on either side by Mina's luscious thighs, and in front of him, her exposed core. His jaw dropped slightly when he saw it practically dripping. Gripping her thighs as hand holds, he took a took breath and went in. It was a peculiar taste, but he rather liked it. He gingerly felt around her with his tongue, savoring the flavor of her warm, soaked butt as he explored. Mina began to rock back and forth slightly as he did, her breathing growing louder and faster. She closed her eyes, a blissful smile on her face as the sensation of Izuku's tongue filled her with delight. He was being incredibly tender, taking his time as he left no inch of her unexplored. Izuku's strategy was methodical. Every time he tested a new spot, he listened carefully for Mina's reaction. The louder her response, the more he focused in on that area. It seemed to be working, as her rocking began to pick up speed as her thighs began to grip his head a little tighter. He remembered his thoughts about watermelon earlier as he found himself enjoying the pressure. As her pleasure increased more and more, Mina took on hand off Izuku and began caressing on her breasts. Her breathy sighs began escalating into full moans as Izuku began to pinpoint her most sensitive spots more and more. Fuak, Izu, you're so good at un. Her other hand began more roughly playing with Izuku's head, pushing him closer to her as she continued fondling her own breast, bringing one to her mouth and sucking on it herself. MMMMPH. Her eyebrows furrowed as she picked up more and more speed, her thighs locking Izuku in a vice-like grip as it all started becoming too much to bear. F. Faster. Harder. He obeyed Mina's breathy demands, now feeling much more confident in himself. The effect was immediately noticeable as Mina started to buckle slightly. He felt a bit of sweat on her thighs as her temperature spiked higher and higher. Her endurance amazed him. He barely lasted a fraction of the time she had, and she had barely touched him. He gave her more, now determined to give her the release she so desperately craved. Right there. Yeah, yeah. A few tears of joy streamed down Mina's face. She looked down at the boy, no, man, responsible for the utter euphoria she was experiencing. Finally, it all started becoming too much for her to bear. She began shaking as she felt the end approaching. Oh God, Izu, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna... Her thighs clamped down harder than ever, and for a moment Izuku worried she might actually crush him. Then her whole body began to convulse, pulsing rhythmically. It was a far wilder orgasm than the one he had had. After several pulses, Mina's moans subsided as her legs released their death grip on Izuku. She fell backwards a bit, catching herself with one hand. She looked down at Izuku with one eye still closed, an incredibly satisfied look on her face. Her chest heaved up and down, making her breasts bounce just a little with each breath. There was a noticeable amount of sweat dripping off her. Holy fuck. Her mouth hanging open, she just shook her head slowly. Izuku, that was. Izuku grinned from ear to ear, filled with pride. Any guilt about his premature coming had vanished as he gazed up at the wonderful woman atop him. Did I do good? He asked half seriously. Mina simply rolled off him, flopping down on the bed beside him and pulling him close and peppering him with kisses. They stayed like that for a while as Mina came down from her high. Izuku couldn't help but feel a hint of envy at how much more Mina seemed to have enjoyed herself, but at the end of the day he was just happy to have given her such a good time. Mina kissed Izuku for what felt like the millionth time. She had gotten even more than expected out of tonight. And yet, it still didn't feel complete. As good as she was feeling right now, she couldn't help but feel just a little bad for her partner. It didn't seem fair she got to have that much fun while he had only really gotten foreplay. The thought then crossed her mind. She lifted her head up, wanting to see if enough time had passed. Oh, would you look at that. Izuku looked at Mina, seeing her staring ahead with a devilish grin. He followed her eyes to see where she was looking, stopping on now fully erect penis. Mina looked at Izuku, that playful smile still on her face. Want to try again? She asked. Izuku was a bit surprised, thinking she'd had more than enough for one night. Are you sure? Mina was already repositioning herself. Only if you are. She winked at him. After what he had done for her, she wanted to make sure Izuku's first time was something worth remembering. He deserved that much. Aye. Izuku paused, then smiled. Of course he wanted to try again. That being all she needed, Mina climbed on top of him one last time. However, she arranged herself differently than before. Rather than facing him, she was now turned around. Though Izuku appreciated the view of her butt, he was slightly confused. Knowing how low his endurance was at this point, Mina once again had decided to change her strategy. She had spent too much time messing around before, this time, she'd get right to the main event. You just sit tight, MK. Just let me do all the work. Before Izuku could question that, he felt her suddenly grab hold of him and once again start coating his member in what he presumed was a very weak acid from her quirk. It didn't hurt, but it left the slightest tingle on his skin. Just something to make it feel even better, Mina explained. She discovered her quirk not only made a great lubricant, but the right level of acidity could increase sensitivity just enough to cause pleasure, but no pain. As Mina finished covering him, something occurred to Izuku that he was ashamed to admit he didn't think of until now. W. Wait. He held out a hand. I don't have any protection or anything. Mina looked back and beamed. No worries. Acid works wonders as birth control, she laughed. 
Another benefit to her quirk. Oh oh, okay. Deciding to trust her word on that, Izuku steeled himself as Mina got into position. Ready. She knew this was probably going to be quick, but that was okay. As long as he got to have some real fun tonight. Ready. Izuku closed his eyes and grit his teeth, unsure of what exactly to expect. Then he felt a warm but wonderful sensation on his cock, and he opened his eyes. Mina began slowly bouncing up and down as she began to fuck him. She hadn't taken all of him in just yet, wanting to play him with at least a little bit first. She grinned as she heard Izuku begin grunting behind her with each thrust. Izuku was entranced by the sight of Mina riding him. Her ass bounced ever so slightly as it rose and fell back onto him over and over. Each time he entered her, his eye twitched a little as he tensed up. Good lord this felt nice. As she picked up the pace, Mina looked back at Izuku longingly. She saw that way he was struggling to contain himself, and it only made her hornier. Izuku caught her gaze, mesmerized by it. He could hardly move the pleasure he was feeling was so great. He wanted to reach up and touch her butt, but his arms were too shaky. Things only got worse as Mina began picking up speed, taking him deeper and deeper inside her. The bed began to creak and rock as her thrusts became more powerful. Un, you feel so guwad, so big and hard. She could. Do you like being inside me, Izu? More and more of Izuku's mental faculties were shutting down, and he could only nod and made a small moaning sound in response. Mina giggled in a bubbly manner. I bet you do. Does it make you want to come? You gonna come inside me, Izu? Hi. Just like before, her words were doing just as much for him as his actions. That breathy, sweet voice she used that was gentle yet commanding was getting to him. Gonna fill me up. Gonna turn me into a big pink cream pie. Her rear was pounding into him now as she took his whole shaft in with each pass. She had begun to change her pace at random now, making sure he could never get used to it. Come on, Izu. Give it to me. Give it to me. Faster. Harder. Izuku made a small effort to thrust with her, but he could barely move. Sweat poured down his brow, and he could feel his heart thumping in his ears. Give it a owl to me. She then fully lifted herself off him and slammed down. It was close now. Every. Mm. Another slam. He could feel it. Last. Himmai. And another. Nothing was going to stop it now. Drop. Amaminai. Izuku cried out as he erupted. Mina went cross-eyed, a wild smile on her face as she felt a geyser of cum shooting up into her. Izuku had never experienced an orgasm this intense. It just kept going and going as he emptied more and more of his load into Mina. By the time he was finished, it felt that he truly had given her every last drop he had. Mina waited a few seconds to make sure he was through, then slid off him. His dick fell unceremoniously to the side with a small plop, an apt metaphor for how he felt right now. He was wheezing as Mina lied back down beside him, smiling contently as she watched him. It was fun seeing how much she had gotten to him. How was it? She asked. Izuku turned his head weakly towards her, not sure if he could even sit up right now. Hey, amazing. He managed to get out. You're amazing. He snuggled up against her, wanting to still feel her warm body against his. Hey, same to you, Mina said sweetly, the top of his head. Both more than satisfied, they nestled together under the covers. Neither really said much as they were both far too exhausted by this point, and before long they had drifted off to sleep. Izuku was the first to wake the next morning. Eyes fluttering open, it took him a bit to recall where he was. As the memories of last night played in his head, his face grew warm as a big, sheepish smile spread across his face. Sex was, in fact, all it was cracked up to be. But more than that, he was still proud that was able to make Mina feel as satisfied as he was. He sat up, looking at the woman beside him. She was snoring slightly, a bit of drool flowing from her mouth. He chuckled, playing with her hair. They hadn't been any promises, but he wanted to keep seeing her, even if it was just for nights like this at first. It wasn't long before Mina awakened, her eyes peering up at Izuku as they opened. A warm smile crossed her lips as she rolled over to look up at him. Hey, she murmured, holding out her hands. Hey, Izuku took them, pulling her up so she was level with him. Sleep well. Very. You. Same. Still holding hands, they leaned in and smooched. You really gave me a workout last night. Mina laughed, rubbing her nose against his. Same to you, hot stuff, she said, going back in for more kisses. After a few minutes of making out, they pulled apart and simply stared at each other. So, now what? Izuku asked. I mean, is this a door? Doesn't have to me. Mina traced a finger along Izuku's pecs, a gesture he was really starting to love. I wouldn't mind seeing you more like this. She paused. Well, maybe not just like this. Maybe like, dinner, or dancing or something. Izuku's heart fluttered at this. I'd like that too, I think. While neither of them was still sure they wanted to call this a relationship just yet, they definitely wanted to be something more than just friends. Great. They embraced, holding each other close. Mina felt something poking her, a sly smile appearing on her face when she realized what it was. Unfortunately, before she could try anything, the moment was quickly ruined by the sound of Izuku's stomach growling. Oh, uh, yeah. He rubbed the back of his head. You, uh, want breakfast? Sure. Her mind was still other places, but she supposed she could eat. Okay. You want to cook, or go out, or... H.M. Mina pondered before a naughty little thought crossed her mind. Smirking, she looked back at Izuku. I know what we could do. She couldn't resist. Huh. Izuku didn't sure he liked that look she was giving him. 
Or maybe he did. You uh, know what 69ing is? Izuku raised an eyebrow. No, what is it? It was a very fulfilling breakfast for both of them. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if broken Deku fell for Mina. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to 12A Ingry Men for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.